install this 20 watt heater in each carburetor and these are the steps that will be required to do that. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the air filter and get it out of the way. We're going to remove these two gear clamps. And it's just a straight screwdriver. Next, we're going to cut the retaining safety wire off so we can remove the air filter completely away from the plane. Notice how, notice how he's doing one side at a time, partially. And just wiggle it back and forth so we can get it off. So there we go. That's out of the way. So before we get started here, you want to protect your airplane. You want to put a nice soft blanket down. I put some rags down here to soak up any kind of cleaners or fluids that will come off. We don't want to damage our paint job. Next step in the process is we're going to remove the front carburetor. We're using a Phillips screwdriver. And we're just going to undo the band clamp. Loosen it off. You don't have to take it right off, just loosen it enough that we can wiggle the carburetor off. So now we're going to grasp the carburetor, we're going to twist it a bit, and off it comes. So notice the fuel line still hooked up. The throttle, the choke, everything is still hooked up. So we're going to place a wiper in the hole to cover up where the, right there, just to keep anything out of the engine. We want to keep the engine nice and clean. Move the, uh, the bowl vent, and where this heater is going to go is in this hole that's behind this little plastic plug. So that's the hole right there. So what we need to do now we have the uh, plug out is we need to take this hole and we need to use a 1764 drill bit to make it just slightly larger so we can tap it easily. So we want to do this several times to go through, stop and make sure that you haven't gone too far. You don't want to touch the bottom of the hole. So keep checking. Can you show me what you mean by the bottom of the hole. And the, the hole is that deep from the end of the screwdriver to there. So you can take that and transfer it with a piece of tape on your drill bit, whatever way you'd like to do it. I'm just doing it freehand. So we finished drilling the hole now. We're, we're done. We're ready to tap. So we're using a, uh, an 8 by 125 tap. It's a metric thread. Which comes with the kit. Which will be included in the kit. I'm going to put some uh, tap lube on it. So then we're going to start it in. And confirm that we're square. And confirm that we're square in each direction. We're good. If you don't feel comfortable uh, doing this tap operation yourself, and you can get somebody with some more experience with that to, uh, to help you out with that and do that for you. You're going fast, but you normally wouldn't, right? Yeah. Okay, so there I'm at the end of where I started the thread already. So now I'm going to go back and use some proper tapping procedures. I'm going to turn it a bit and back it. Turn it and back it. Turn it and back it. So I'm cutting thread right now. Turn it, back it up. Turn it and back it up. Turn it and back it up, which is standard tapping. Now it's stiff to turn. It could have filings packed behind it, or I might be at the bottom of the hole. So let's remove the tap, clean the hole, and see where we made it to. Okay, I'm just using common things that we'd have around our airplanes, like WD-40. So I'm going to rinse it with WD-40. Rinse out the hole. We've all got some brake cleaner around. We'll give it a little squirt in the hole. Henceforth, why we need to really protect the side of the airplane. And I'll take my flashlight and I will look in there. Okay, we need to top it just a little bit further. <clears throat> the top is clean. We're going to lubricate it again. 
and back in we go make sure that the thread starts nice it's all straight okay we'll wind it into where we left off and there we go so it had uh, some material packed behind it so we'll be able to get in further we're nearly finished so tighten it loosen it tighten it loosen it we are at the bottom so now we're going to remove it this should be the last time we're going to clean the hole again and again we're just using WD-40 because we all have that kicking around and a little brake cleaner to give it a flush It looks like we have nice threads in the hole. Let me uh, expand that up. I'm going to clean the edge of the uh, the hole here with a with a hand uh, countersink. All right, looks good. Give it a final cleaning. Okay. So what we're going to do now is, here's our 20 watt heating element. So we're going to test fit it in the hole, make sure our threads are good. This should go in with your fingers, very easy to go in with your fingers. Now when we get to the very end, if you screw it in with a wrench now, you can damage the carburetor housing here. So you don't want to tighten this up fully until it has the wire harness in it. So the wire harness is going to go in this little space that's left right here where the screwdriver is. So do not test it and tighten it past that spot. Okay, we're going to remove it again. So the next step in the installation process is we're going to run our wire harness. We've just temporarily attached it with a tie strap there just to keep it in the general location it's going to need to go. When it's finished, it'll, it needs to be uh, fastened on properly so that it's not going to chafe. First thing I want to do is I want to take our ground contact here, which is the two wires with the ring end on it, and hook it up to a good ground, which we're going to use right here, which is where the, uh, the spark plug uh, cables attach on. So I'm going to loosen that and remove this bolt here, and then I'm going to install this on it. Okay, so I've just installed the uh, ground cable on the bolt that holds the, uh, the spark plug cables and it has some other grounds on this plane here too. So we're just going to retighten this and then we'll come back and torque it to uh, Rotax uh, factory specification on that bolt. And for now I'll just hand tighten it. So that completes the ground installation so it runs from this bolt here and it runs up and it runs around the starter and just lays on top and it all blends in for, for fastening it after into a harness. Okay, now we've completed our ground circuit. Now let's actually install the heaters and the carburetors. We'll move the, uh, we've previously installed the carburetors back on. Everything is tight, they're straight and level across the top. So now we're going to take one of our heating elements and we're going to put some heat sink compound on it now we're going to take, I'm going to do the front carburetor here because it's easier for you to see it we're going to insert it with the heat shrink or heat compound, heat compound on it install it in, we're going to hand tighten it, finger tighten it now you remember from before, you cannot tighten this up unless it has the wire ring on it because you will damage your carburetor. So it's still going in. Okay, we're using a uh, inch pounds torque wrench and we're going to go to 30 inch pounds. 
and we will tighten that up and that is it 30 inch pounds and we'll take our positive wire and we'll just rewrap it here a little bit insert it on we'll bend the ground down a little bit and then we're going to take a tie strap and connect these two together so that this cannot fall off. So we'll tie strap the two of these together then we'll put and tie strap and secure the whole rest of the harness together. This wire that you might see here is just a spare wire that was running the airplane at the same time in case they needed a wire in the future. Now this wire now is run into the fuselage it's routed all the way up to the front and we'll go over that installation next okay, okay so here we are in the rear carburetor I routed the harness down through I have installed the heat sink compound on the heater put it through the ground ring I'm hand tightening it and now we'll go back and of course we're gonna go with 30 inch pounds again and we're gonna keep the connector facing up Install the positive lead, bend that one down, and again, we'll tie strap that one together and we'll secure the routing of all our lines. Okay, so now that we've got that done, we're going to secure this uh, positive lead by uh, attaching it to the negative lead with a tie strap. And now it's secured and it can't slip off. Okay, now that we've completed our uh, wire harness installation on the engine and it's properly grounded at the back, we need to run the power wire that's going to operate the system down through the fuselage. So the wires run along the uh, harness and it's run up alongside the existing harness. This again is the uh, extra wire that was put in there for future consideration. Uh, it runs up into the panel and then it runs to this switch for on off and of course it must be in a fuse circuit and this is the fuse for it and it will be labeled as carburetor heat.